Welcome to this first Quick Logic Quick Feather Evaluation Board video. I plan to provide you an overview of the board and run the basic diagnostic tests. Quick Logic, partnering with Ant Micro, has created the first AdFruit multi core SOC evaluation kit for machine learning and IoT applications that embraces fully the open source community, including both hardware and software. Full details can be found in the QuickLogic GitHub repositories. Inside the QuickLogic GitHub repositories, you'll see information on the FPGA design flow, bootloaders, FreeRTOS SDK, Zephyr SDK, but today I'm going to talk about the QuickFeather Development Board repository. In here you'll see KiCad design files, 3D modeling information, and inside documentation you'll see a user guide for the board. The user guide includes full information on the development board, including the components that are on board, the layout, and also details of the I.O. that are available on the 0.1 inch header on the add fruit form factor. The board itself includes QuickLogic EOS S3 multi-chip SOC, including a low-powered Cortex M4F core and SRAM-based FPGA. We also have an M-cubed accelerometer, an Infineon pressure sensor, an Infineon MEMS microphone, 16 megabits of onboard flash, a user button, and a tricolor LED. The board is powered from USB, and also communication is over a USB using a UART protocol. We have possibility to connect the board to a battery. I'm now gonna go through and show the demo that we have here. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to open up whatever your favorite terminal program is. I'm going to use PuTTY in this instance, and we're going to select it as a serial port because we're going to be communicating over the UART cable using a serial protocol. So I need to know what COM port the board is actually configured. So I'm going to go into, first of all, I need to go and reset the board itself. And you'll see the blue LED pulses. I then need to, once it stopped pulsing, I need to go into the device manager and look to see what COM port is actually being configured. And you can see here that COM35 is being used as this board. So I change this setting to COM35 and then the board rate to 115, 200 board. I'll then get in the terminal, I'll get a splash screen that gives us information about the build that was used for the image that we're booting from. And now I have a command line interface and I can type in help or question mark and I get a list of commands that are available. So I'm going to use the diagnostic command here and then I can bring up a sub menu which shows me the options I have available which is to toggle the red LED, the green LED or the blue LED or to check the status of a user button. So if I type in red you will then see that the red LED comes on. I can then turn the red LED off. I can go green, turn the green off, and then finally the blue. I can also check the status of the user button. And you can see that it's not pressed. If I then select the option and then press the button, I can see that it's pressed. So by doing this, I can see that the board is functioning as I'd expect. And in future videos, we can show you how to compile the SDK for either FreeRTOS or Zephyr, download that onto the board, and also compile and test and debug FPGA images. Stay tuned for future videos. Thank you.